Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's 1 million by 1 million strategy roundtable for entrepreneurs. 1M by 1M, as you know, is the first and only global virtual accelerator in the world. Our mission is to help a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars and beyond in annual revenue. And in support of that mission, we've been doing these three public roundtables for more than a decade. It started back as an experiment back in the fall of 2008, and then it blossomed into a full-blown acceleration program and, and so on and so forth. So today, this is our 447th session. Um, every single recording is available on our YouTube channel, 1M1M Roundtables, and this one will be on it as well. If you're live tweeting the show today, please use hashtag 1M1M. And you can join us on Twitter at 1M by 1M and Ask Romana. These are the call-in instructions. This is a round table, not a broadcast. We want you to all participate as much as possible, as much as you would like to. So uh, we're going to start with some scheduled programming, but I will put the slide back up a bit later. And you're most welcome to call in and ask questions, weigh in, share your thoughts, so, so that it's an interactive session. We are going to start today's session with a conversation with Victoire Lohanty at Kerala Ventures in Paris. Victoire, welcome to the show. Thank you. So uh, we are going to start first by getting to know you and Kerala Ventures, and also we're going to spend some time understanding the development of the French uh, startup ecosystem. So let's, uh, why don't we start with you introducing yourself a little bit as well as Carola Ventures. Okay, great. Um, so, um, hello to everybody. My name is Victoire Noranti. I work at Kerala. Kerala is the seed pre-seed fund in France. We, uh, we do early investment. Um, and we, we, we invest between 100k and 1.5 million euros, and we are very early investors, free revenue most of the time. Um, myself, so I'm an engineer. Um, I did three years of strategy consulting. Then I joined a PE firm called Ardian, and it was quite financial, um, and I wanted a more, let's say, tech uh, job. And, uh, and also more an operational job. You see, you do a lot of operations, especially at Kerala, you help a lot uh, um, CEOs to scale the company in terms of recruitment, um, um, understanding is, um, their processes, etc. What is the size of the Kerala Ventures Fund? How big is the fund? Um, so, mostly, Kerala is not a fund, but we do um, four to five deals per year. And we invest approximately, uh, let's say, uh, 1 million euro per, um, per, um, per deal. So we, have, we, we don't have a fund structure, but more or less, we invest 5 million per year. So it's a group um, of angels? Is that how the, fund, how the organization is structured? The fund works? Yes, exactly. So it's a, it's a SPV. I don't know if everybody is familiar with that. It's a, a financial vehicle. vehicle. And we, we invest 10% of the amount, uh, and then Business Angel will invest 90% of the amount. But Kerala has a board seat, and Kerala does the follow-up of the company and the, um, and the investment in the company. Um, however, uh, the Business Angel uh, do participate uh, in, the, in the financial uh, realm. And it's a D by D, so, so we have a platform, an internal platform. We push deals and uh, we, uh, business and business decide to, 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 to follow or not to follow. What is the focus of the investments that the, the platform likes to make? What sectors within so, the technology startup ecosystem, okay. what sectors? We do a lot of SaaS uh, and marketplace. We invested, uh, for instance, in the Dr. Lieb when it was the very beginning of the company, uh, Dr. Lieb uh, had no revenues uh, and, uh, and no product, um, and, 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 and Dr. Lieb is now a unicorn in France. So it's, uh, we, we do a lot. We are very specialized in SaaS and marketplace in France, and we focus on tech uh, in general. We are, gen uh, we are a generalist uh, firm. 
And what, um, so you said that you invested with no revenue, just a concept. What do you like to see when you decide to make an investment? Are you making mostly concept stage investments or is there something in the company, some level of validation before you invest? Um, of course, I mean, um, as a seed investor, you look uh, a lot. Uh, you, I mean, you, you try to really uh, lead on the team. And for instance, uh, concerning Dr. Lee, the entrepreneur, Stan, was uh, exceptional, charismatic, and brilliant. Um, and um, he loves everyone in an atmosphere of commitment, team spirit, which is uh, something that But my that question we really is, uh, are at. you looking for companies that are already in business and the product is already, so let's take it two different ways. Let's take SaaS separately and marketplace separately. When you are investing in a SaaS venture, um, is the product already ready? Do you understand the positioning of the company or, or is it, are you investing pre-product? Um, it depends, again. Uh, the company was pre-product and we really focused on the, on the entrepreneur, but, um, in some, let's say, more competitive um, space, or when we need, uh, when we need to have a, a bit of traction for some, for some reasons, uh, and to test the product, then we would uh, we do both. It depends really on the market, on the team. Uh, it seed is quite specific, to be honest. It depends. Okay. Each project is different. Okay. So um, let's talk about some of the uh, different SaaS. Uh, markets that you have invested in, uh, what kind of SaaS businesses are you seeing in, in the French ecosystem? Um, what do you mean by, by, by what kind of SaaS? Which like sector, what, uh, it's not, why don't we do some examples of SaaS investments that you've made, some, some of the SaaS yes. companies that you've invested in. So just, we, just to get a feel for what, what is going on in the French ecosystem by way of SaaS. Okay, but I mean, it's quite opportunistic um, here. It, it, it would not be, we, 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 we can talk after um, on sea trends in France, but concerning all investments, so um, we invested in Dr. Dib. Dr. Lieb um, tackles the relationship between doctors, patients, and uh, medical appointments. Yeah. Uh, so it's a B2B and B2C SaaS. Then yeah. we invested in George. George is um, it's a, an accountable software for uh, liberal professions, lawyers, uh, doctors, etc. Uh, which is uh, more B2B SaaS, but still uh, um, quite. Uh, I mean, quite, uh, um, we invested also, I mean, do you want me to list of the first companies we invested? No, in? just getting a feel or for, just getting a feel if there's any kind of uh, trend uh, that's developing. So how many, so here's a French question actually, more, not just your portfolio, but a France-wide question. How many SaaS companies do you think are operating in France right now? Is SaaS a big trend in um, France? Yes, SaaS is a big trend in France. When you take the, the let's say, SaaS code and you look at created companies, they will, they will around um, three, 200 startups in SaaS today in France, created uh, okay. each year. Um, and it's really growing. So this is a key trend. And are, um, of the 200, start, 200 SaaS startups, how many have gone through some kind of funding? All of them or some portion of them? I mean, um, I would say, no, really, really not all of them. Um, in these 200 companies, I think, at, at, I mean, I, I don't want to give any, uh, any, uh, any statistics that is not true, but um, um, I didn't dig on that, on that number precisely, but the number of, of companies raising funds in SaaS is, is also growing. There is a buzz okay. trend. Got it. I got it. And what about marketplaces? How many marketplaces are operating in France? Is that a big trend? You obviously you've picked it's marketplaces and SaaS as the two categories. Um, it's much more difficult to say. There is no uh, precise number of that because there is no uh, 
let's say, code referring specifically to marketplaces. So um, I don't know, but it's also a, a key trend. We see a lot of the, these two models are growing a lot uh, in the last years. Can you give us some examples of marketplaces that either you have invested in or are doing really well in France that are interesting, um, you know, trend okay. examples? So one, one of them, we invested in Tractor. Tractor is a marketplace that puts in relationship, um, 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 I say, um, oh, I don't know how to say that in English, but um, a BTP companies with um, some suppliers to help them rent their material. I don't know if it's, uh, if it's clear. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a marketplace we invested in, like in 2015, it's going um, by over 100% um, uh, per year. So it's, it's, it's quite, um, I mean, it's, uh, it's, quite, it's growing a lot. Then you have, in the, the companies that work well in France, you have back market. Um, that, back, do you know back market? It's a, it's a refurbished uh, market, marketplace. Refurbishing of what? So typically, there is smartphone, there is everything. I see, electronics refurbishing. Electronics, yes, exactly. Um, okay. And they, uh, just, they just, um, they did a fundraising uh, not that long ago. Um, uh, very last and what, um, and, uh, So what are the yes? uh, trends in France? Uh, obviously, France has made a big statement that France wants to improve the startup ecosystem. There's Station F and, and all these, you know, things that have come together in Paris. What, if you look at, let's say, the Macron presidency, which made a big statement in favor of startups, what has happened? What, how would you summarize some of the developments and the trends? And, and what, are, what are some of the accomplishments of the French ecosystem based on this emphasis, this focus? So um, there is now five, five limiters in France. Um, OVH, Dr. Lib, which is one of our portfolio companies, Deezer, Blablacar, and the last one, uh, Miro, who just uh, raised 250 million euros. So we can see that they are, uh, we can see recently that there are some companies scaling, really scaling, and coming from France. So that's a key accomplishment uh, and a key, a key trend. We, 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 can, um, we can indeed uh, create unit, unicorns in France. It's not a key trend, but at least it's a key accomplishment. Achievement. Um, mm -hmm. The key trend, uh, I would say, um, I would say that there is um, more and more creative startups, but not all of them. They, I mean, the, the, the ecosystem is, is, is becoming more and more mature, and it's uh, really well, uh, um, really well uh, supported. We have Bebe France who help a lot on that. And who, um, so uh, when you look more, at the and more startups are created, but they are not all uh, VC compatible. Some of them are uh, more coming. Uh, small businesses than really uh, large companies. That's fine. We are we are actually very supportive of small uh, small startups as well. We don't necessarily only exactly. support venture funded startups. I think it's very important for an ecosystem's health to have those smaller startups. Yes, but do you have a exactly? Have a and these small startups are not very well um, um, financed yet. You know what I mean. The VC backable startups can grow really well. There are lots of VC here, but still in the, let's say, small but beautiful ecosystem, you don't have any financial, um, very, um, let's say, financial solution to help them, except from uh, uh, loans, et cetera. We don't have uh, funds specialized specifically on that, uh, on that uh, segment. What is the total number of Startups, technology startups operating in France right now. So, in France, there is around, I think, we, we did a rough estimate, but five thousand startups. 
Five thousand. Okay. Um, it, this is a stock, but so they are around half of them are uh, um, on a. I mean, it, it, so five hundred uh, five thousand startups, and then among that, um, we think that around uh, uh, one hundred. I mean, 1,000 would be on all scope. Okay. 1,000 you think have enough scalability to fit the venture model, the rest are bootstrap. No, 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 not fitting, the, not, fitting the, the, not, sorry, not fitting the venture model, really, uh, let's say, having um, the um, businesses in SaaS marketplace, the digital oh, I SaaS. See. I see, I see. And the then ones that you're interested you in, the sectors startup, you're interested in. Yeah, exactly. And then if you look really at startups that are VC backable and can be a uh, really, uh, unicorn in, in the coming year, there is more, uh, I mean, there is less than uh, 20 startups per year in France. I think. So it's, it's a quite small market. Yeah, sure. It's growing. But, and and it's that's very small. typical. That's very typical. Um, where do the entrepreneurs come from? Of course, you know, for, uh, if you look at the French Grandi Coach system, the, the broader uh, market, where, where are the, the startups coming from, the entrepreneurs coming from? Are they coming from the Grandi Coach? Are they coming from the smaller institute? Where, what is the profile of a typical entrepreneur? So typical, uh, the entrepreneurs that we see, at least in VC firms, are uh, Quite young, they are uh, three to four years of, uh, of uh, work experience before creating their company. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't, we don't see a lot of. Really, that's perhaps because I work at Kerala, um, and we are, let's say, more focused on first, um, first time entrepreneurs. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a complete truth for the entire French market. So in general, mm -hmm. what I can see is that it, it, people are. Under 35, I think you can say that um, they have worked um, a bit from, and they come from very diverse backgrounds. Uh, many of them, I mean, it, it really. I, I don't want to. Um, the, the question has to be more specific. Do you think? Do you speak about VC compatible uh, com companies, or do you speak of uh, uh, about startup in general? Really Whatever you have data for, I'm just trying to, un, you know, kind of understand what's happening. You know, in different countries, different ecosystems develop differently, and um, I, I'm just trying to understand. And like, for example, if you look at India, um, the IITs produce a lot of startups because they're, you know, the entrepreneur cells, entrepreneurship cells of the IITs, Indian Institute of Technology. This is the equivalent, I would say, of the Gandhi course in India have produced a lot of entrepreneurs. Uh, but, you know, in France, the Grandi Coast tend to also uh, produce people who are very elitist and have, great, have the best jobs and so forth. So they're very, they're very secure career paths. So they don't always produce those kinds of security. That kind of security doesn't always produce entrepreneurs. The, the people who have, you know, have to take more risks to get ahead often end up being from less, you know, privileged backgrounds. Okay, um, that's true. But so all I'm trying to ask is what, what is the trend that you're seeing? This is, you know, more, we've seen different trends in different countries, different geographies. I'm just trying to understand what yes, is the, the trend the, the here. Trend is, it's coming from very young people uh, creating startups just after, uh, just after school to really, um, um, let's say, uh, more mature uh, persons, older, older people um, coming from very We're diverse very backgrounds. It depends a lot. What you're saying is very young. That's one thing. One thing that I'm hearing in your uh, commentary is that the entrepreneurs are very yes, young. Yes, I see. So I see you... a lot of young people, but still, um, there are more and more. I think mature entrepreneurs, who uh, not mature entrepreneurs, but older people trying to. Uh, uh, create startup and enter the, this, uh, this, uh, this, this, let's say, new market uh, um, in general. Okay. But I mean, it's quite difficult um, to, to, to really become a real trend because when you are this fund, you, you, you see a lot, of course, of, of quite young people uh, 
it, it depends. Yeah. Is there any other trends that you want to highlight as part of a kind of overview? Um, we see that more and more international farmers here in France. Um, in particular, they were very focused on CVV and CCB, and they are now coming to seed. That's a key trend. Um, we see um, valorization coming uh, quite high, and also uh, entrepreneurs um, raising the um, amount, um, let's say, a larger amount of money uh, at the very beginning of the um, of the company. Um, so that's the key trend that we see in France. But I mean, the market is becoming more and more mature, so this this trend is followed. All right. Well, thank you for uh, your point of view and uh, giving us an overview of the French ecosystem. And uh, we will continue to cover thank you. Uh, France and Paris in, in, in upcoming sessions. Thanks for coming, Victor. Thank you. All right, folks, we're going to switch to the entrepreneur pitch section. Um, let me set a bit of expectations before you jump in. Many of you have presented before because we have a bunch of uh, premium members who are going to be discussing their issues today. Um, but know this, that this is a safe working session. We are on your side. We have absolutely no other agenda besides helping you accelerate your journey. So you don't need to be defensive. You don't need to be nervous. Speak candidly of what your issues are, and we'll try our best to help you. Now, also in the realm of possibilities is the fact that you might disagree with the feedback you get here today, and that's perfectly fine. It's your venture. You are going to drive the strategy of the venture. The most important thing is that you listen, you consider the feedback you get, but ultimately it's your decision. Remember one thing though, not all businesses can raise money and raising money doesn't guarantee success. You just heard the conversation with Victoire, 5,000 startups in Paris, in, in not Paris, just in France, but a small percentage of those are that fit that the venture model. And that is, a, that is a reality everywhere. VCs are trying to go from zero to $100 million in revenue in five to seven years. And if you don't fit that profile, then traditional VCs will not most likely invest in your company. There is a class of VCs that are developing out there, and we have some of, we were, we're working with some of them that are interested in smaller bootstrapping to exit opportunities. So they'll put in small amounts of capital. The understanding between the investor and the entrepreneur team is that the company will be built up to a point with a small amount of capital and they, the, the team will seek an early exit. That's, that's a relatively new trend and a relatively new phenomenon, uh, not the traditional VC phenomenon. This is, a, this is a different trend, but it is happening and there are a lot of opportunities, actually, because the main issue here is that most exits in the, in the technology industry happens in the sub-$50 million exit price range. So if you have to make money for yourselves as entrepreneurs as well as your investors at the sub-$50 million exit price range, you have to build your company up to the exit point with a very small amount of capital. So all of that has to be factored into your strategy as you go along, and accordingly, you need to make strategic decisions. So with that preamble, I'm going to invite Ankit Vaish to tell us what you are doing right now. Ankit? Uh, yeah. Hi, Samana. Can you hear me? Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Hello. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you, everyone. Uh, your team uh, and Maureen, thank you especially for like uh, giving us this opportunity and uh, guiding us through how to initiate things and like on every uh, technical aspect and everything. So let me uh, brief about Prober Smart Things. I am one of the co-founders in Prober Smart Things, and uh, uh, I take care of the financing thing. So I am basically C uh, CFO in Prober Smart Things. So Prober Smart Things is a very early stage startup. We have started two years back, 
and we are uh, uh, working on distribution side of power distribution companies and we are mm -hmm. helping them uh, bring down their uh, distribution losses so next slide okay. please so in india uh, around uh, 20% atnc losses are there which is like aggregate commercial and technical losses in uh, power distribution industry so we are trying to bring these losses by, down by around uh, 4 to 5 percent and uh, we had uh, like uh, we started around 9 10 months back with our pilot and commercial pro uh, execution of a project and by mm -hmm. this we have around uh, 280,000 uh, dollars of traction till date and we have put our Can product you? in around uh, um, kids what is what is what does two eighty thousand traction mean? Does that mean that you are generating two hundred and eighty thousand dollars worth of revenue, or does it mean that you have saved two hundred and eighty thousand dollars for your customers? What are we talking about here? No, so this is what we have. Uh, uh, this is what what is our order uh, in hand. Out of this, we have generated revenue of two hundred k till date. Okay. And the order, okay, very the, good. Uh, yeah, so next 80, uh, 80K will be executed in next one or two months. Okay, got it, got it, okay. And yeah. this is from two customers, uh, BSES Yamuna and BSES Rajasthani. Correct, correct. So presently, we, because we are a Delhi-based startup, so we started with Delhi. So these are the sure. only uh, two customers with whom we are working, uh, we, with whom we have done commercial uh, uh, ordering. And uh, okay. along with that, we are now uh, having three more customers with us, like Tata Power, that I'll uh, introduce in you in next slide. And uh, very good. As of now, we are scaling up very fast, and we are raising uh, one million round. Okay. And that will help us to execute a order of around 1.8 uh, million USD. Okay. So uh, basically, India is third uh, biggest country, which has, which is a power surplus country. And it is third biggest in generation of power. But even then, around 25% of Indian population is not having access to reliable power supplies. So here we come and we are solving this problem for distribution companies and we are trying to reduce down their losses. Because mm -hmm. once you, one, what happens if the losses are high, these companies cannot uh, distribute the power in that efficient manner. So uh, this is the basic problem that we are solving. Next slide, please. So the problem I already told you, why they are not able to do it till now, because uh, optimization of their uh, field assets include huge lot of CAPEX and OPEX. And mm -hmm. there is no visibility of uh, their personal, uh, uh, like uh, field employees and field personnel, so that they can keep a track that whether these assets have been properly diagnosed or not. So this is the problem in the current scenario. And there's a huge, huge lot of custom uh, dis, uh, dissatisfaction on the side of customers, mm -hmm. which leads to huge uh, revenue losses for distribution power distribution companies in India. Next slide, mm -hmm. please. So what our solution is, we basically provide uh, four category of solution, that, and we call it end-to-end -end monitoring solution of a distribution company. So we basically mm -hmm. provide uh, our hardware, our uh, IoT-based hardware, on their all the assets that they have on field. So that comes under asset management. We do their asset management. By mm -hmm. then, by providing these uh, hardware, we try to bring their data in real time to our dashboard, by which we provide them uh, real time analysis of their uh, power consumption outages. Uh, any predictive and preventive maintenance thing. And along with this, uh, we are planning to have an analytical team, analytics team, by which we mm -hmm. will be able to provide them uh, energy management in future. So they, mm -hmm. in India, they, power companies buy energy on hourly basis. So we will be able to tell them that uh, what, is, what is your uh, ener power consumption for next one hour, two hours, so that they, they can buy energy in more efficient way. Currently, mm -hmm. Indian power companies spend around 90% of their uh, expenditure is on power purchasing. And mm -hmm. in, in current scenario, their power purchasing is around 80% accurate. So we want to increase this accuracy by 95%. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So that whatever power they con- purchase, they distribute it to customers. So that uh, even customers don't get unsatisfied that there are power cuts or something like that. And even that this uh, power distribution companies also don't incur losses on excess buying. And then okay. the fourth thing we are doing is we are bringing all their uh, field personals and the field teams on real time. Uh, these we, um, they can uh, track their employees and field uh, personals, and they can allocate them w- that what is the pending job to be done, so that uh, the whole system gets in sync with the yeah. respective people. So next, okay. uh, so uh, in the slide, uh, yeah, next slide. So. There are the, what benefits we are offering to our customer. We would like to like uh, quantitative if we tell we are uh, basically charging for both the things for hardware. We are charging capex and we are charging uh, opex for our uh, SaaS based uh, services. So on an average, uh, our hardware is uh, is uh, having a life of minimum five years. We take a warranty for five years. So if we like uh, do it pro rata, so it will come to around eleven. Uh, Dollars per month, and we are trying. We are bringing a profit generation to them by around five percent. We are decreasing their losses by five percent. So this is a win-win situation for them. So these are these are the quali- uh, qualitative ben- uh, sorry quantitative benefits and qualitative benefits. If you see, we are optimizing their field assets. We are op- we are bring- bringing them. Uh, we are giving them full end-to-end solution. We are providing. Okay. One second. um you said the the hardware price is 11 dollars per no no so the, so so uh, the pro- the life of product is uh, 5 years and the okay. hardware price is 350 350 dollars per substation so okay. monthly cost will be around 5.8 dollars so that is a capex at 350 dollars they pay one shot in one Contract, go they pay in the beginning. but this is yeah. this is this is an average cost that i have calculated for monthly and we charge them around 60 dollars per uh, annum for software services so that comes to 5 dollars so per month so the way you're so that, presenting that is, a, is a problem you know the way you're presenting is not right it's very difficult to understand what you're trying to say um, there are very standard ways you know in the industry there are very standard ways of presenting a business like yours and you need to follow those standards for investors to be able to understand what you're saying have you done investor okay. pitches already uh yeah one or two not many more not many yeah i would advise you to not do too many investor pitches with this pitch deck i would like you to work with us um and and revise your investor pitch to a to standard industry standard terminology and presentation formats and then do the investor pitches you will have much higher success rate in closing deals okay i would love, love to hear your uh, suggestion yeah so uh, so typically what the way i would like to see this is that what is the pricing model of this so, so what are the, the different categories that is in the next slide yeah uh, that will come uh, i mean uh, so uh, why the, there's a very common question when it comes to investors that why now if it, this is mm-hmm. so valuable why are not customers your customers and these uh, power distribution companies are why they have not done so far so yeah. uh, what happened before 2012 iot was not there in field so now iot is new to everyone so even governments are not very keen to like uh, they were not very adaptive even big companies they were not very understanding uh, they were not having that mindset that even technology can help us in getting things and especially when it comes to distribution of uh, energy transmission side mm-hmm. they had grid side they had but energy distribution is very vast uh, like if you go in any city on every 200 or 500 meters you will find a distribution transformer so as a implement as a policy level it was very difficult for both uh, uh discoms and government to have that much yeah. of capex right so before before 2012 all the big players they were working on scada they were working on conventional systems like scada so scada and that technology is working with big shots like honeywell abb schneider siemens so the cost of the technology is high the cost of their end product is high so these companies were not ready to go to to spend that much of uh, amount so now 
IoT is free of cost. IoT is cheap. The hardwares are cheap. They are cost effective. So now it is easy for them to work on these losses. So now we come into play and uh, we are doing pretty well and we are hoping good things for future. So Next slide, please. The question that you're going to get when you present this slide, the question that you're going to get is, yes, the components are cheap. And so doesn't it mean that Schneider and Honeywell and, and so on and so forth can also produce um, you know, their IoT product solutions at a much cheaper price. So, so how do so you actually, compete with them? What, yeah, yeah. So, so what happens, because their complete system is based on SCADA, and for them it is not easy to move their system from SCADA to IoT in one go. For them it is a mental, uh, mental status also that why to shift their complete system. So for them it will take a little time, maybe five years down the line, Second thing is that they are not, they are working on distribution uh, they are working on transmission and generation side but not on distribution mm -hmm. side because distribution side is very tricky and vast because the, they need to work on ground level from every transformer which is placed on transmission side it will have around mm -hmm. 100 number of uh, outgoings of distribution transformers so for them it is easy to have their system on one transmission uh, transformer or transmission substation rather than putting mm -hmm. their hardware and their services on 100 number of uh, distribution transformers in a set. So for them, it is so a your, little... So uh, your go-to-market strategy is you will need to put your devices on every single transformer, right? Yes, correct. So who does that? Operationally, who does that and who pays for that? So we have operation teams and installation teams and uh, we have development teams, both the things we are doing as of now. And do you charge for that installation? Yes, we charge separately. That is not included in the pitch, and uh, that is uh, irrespective. That we do mostly cost on cost. We don't make margin there. As of now, we don't do. But you, ha but you have to have the trained staff to be, so it's part of your operational cost, and you have to invest yeah, so, in hiring so, the people so, and all of that. So. So we, there are both the models. We can like uh, we cannot do uh, everywhere. Uh, even if we go to some foreign uh, country, so we cannot do it there. So we will have channel partners there. So installation we will leave to channel partners. That's why we have not included anything of that sort in the pitch. But we do it as of now in Delhi. Yeah, but we are you, doing if it. you if you have if you have to have channel partners, you can't do cost. On cost, right? The channel partners are not going to do no, just so, 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 for cost. They have, we will have to. They will have to make margins. No, otherwise, so, they're not going to be a channel so partner. That, so that that margin can be inbuilt in the uh, costing. It will be not more than 20, 30 percent of the cost. Uh, that is very generic in India, and I guess uh, in countries where we are focusing to do, uh, that is not an issue. Okay. So our total, uh, what we have calculated, our total market, uh, Indian market size is around five billion dollars. And we are initially targeting on uh, 500 million dollars. And uh, the global market, what we have uh, analyzed, is around 25 billion dollars. So we are uh, this year we are planning to uh, do with five. Currently we are we were doing with two discoms, and uh, by end of this year we will be doing it with five discoms and uh, one uh, uh, one uh, out of India. We are focusing, uh, currently we are in talks with one person, uh, one uh, Bangladesh company, so we will be doing it there. We are looking for opportunities, yet not finalized. So this is our plan for this year. Next slide, please. Okay. Where is the pricing model? So that will come. Because so, what, so this, what can, are you can presenting, you, can, what, what you're presenting here, this market size, is that a bottom-up time analysis or is this a top-down thing? So uh, five billion is uh, for the Indian market. Yeah, but it's top, bottom top, up or uh, top down? Uh, it's bottom up. So bottom up requires a pricing model supporting that. Where is the pricing model? So it, it, if you see that uh, uh, we have put around uh, number of substations is eight million, and uh, average price per substation that will be charging is uh, six fifty. So that's your only the, revenue. Is the is this IoT cost the unit cost of the IoT? That's the only revenue that you get. So so out of the 650, 350 is the cost of hardware, 
and uh, revenue mm-hmm. for five year that we will be in contract with. So that is around three hundred dollars. So total cost is around six fifty dollars. And for eight million, understand. it is coming to be. I I, I don't understand. Uh, may I know the what you are charging? The price you are charging. Getting? The price you are charging is what six hundred and fifty per hardware unit. It's not a subscription model. It's a hardware unit model, right? No, no, no. It, it's a both thing. It's a subscription. of services plus hardware so for hardware we charge 350 dollars when we sell the hardware and for okay. subscription which uh, for subscription we charge 60 dollars per annum for next 5 years so uh, 60 dollars per annum yeah 60 dollars per annum per distribution transformer so per substation okay. you can say and there are 8 million substations in india And this six hundred and fifty is based on a five-year calculation. Yes, so sixty uh, into five plus three fifty. So you're you're okay. Got it. So six hundred and fifty. So basically, eight, basically, okay. I have removed Sorry. I have removed few decks, uh, few slides from this deck so that I keep it short. Otherwise, we have okay. detailed two, three more slides on uh, pricings and things. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so our uh, go-to market strategy is very simple. So currently, as I told you, we are working with the top clients. So uh, I told you that we will be working with five. So four are already nice. direct in, uh, enterprise selling. Some, yeah. So four are already in the sheet. You can see, and one more we have cracked, and uh, mm-hmm. that is not. We are going to work with Noida Power. So that is not in the list because I did not update this, and that is done uh, uh, like five six days back. so and okay. second thing is we are collaborating with system integrators so that it is easy for us to uh, execute our uh, product and uh, technology in places where we don't have reach as of now so we have collaborated mm-hmm. with lnt we have collaborated with our reliance group company unlimit which are they are mainly focused in uh, iot and we are also mm-hmm. collaborating with local uh, transformers manufacturers so that they provide our sensors inbuilt and uh, inbuilt yeah mm-hmm. we, yeah so and we are also working with government of india we are, they have a special uh, niti aayog so we are working with them so to get these uh, policy to get this thing in policy level and uh, we can work, uh, because of that we will be for us it will be easy to directly penetrate into the public utilities as of now we are more focused working with uh, private utilities because doing a government business in india is a little typical thing So, and these uh, leads, the companies that you are direct, you are already in conversation with, the primary targets, are they coming directly or are they coming through the system integrators? No, whatever we are doing it now, they are directly. Reliance, Tata, Adani, Nada okay. Power, Torrent, they are direct. Okay. So this is yeah, Good. this is the right. pricing sheet I have included. Okay. So, um, so these are uh, we started around eight nine months back. So as of now, we have built around two hundred k dollars. <coughs> for next uh, like 3 uh, years we have two models if we keep us bootstrapped we will be able to uh, in this current year we will be able to do around uh, 37000 distribution utility uh, distribution uh, substation with a mm-hmm. hardware price of around 350 dollars and uh, annual subscription we will be charging at around 60 dollars mm-hmm. and by this we will be for them for distribution companies we will be reducing their capex cost and we will not be able to scale up much but uh, our post funding scenario we want to do we can do our easily around 175 uh, k distribution transformers in that model we thought of reducing the hardware price uh, and we will doing we will be doing hardware uh, price at a like cost to cost thing and software will be increasing we will be increasing our saas mo- uh, saas costing that will we will we will charge it around 85 uh, k and uh, Sorry, eighty-five dollars per annum, and by this we will be uh, having a very uh, like uh, we will be having a very. What is your growth. hardware cost? My no hardware price. cost is oh. around one one. Yeah, my hardware cost is around one fifty dollars. One fifty. It varies because there are seven different hardware, so it varies from one uh, twenty-five to uh, two hundred dollars. So, so average you're out it is around one seventy. You're proposing that post funding you want to do a, at cost. The hardware is at cost, and yeah, you're not making money on the hardware. Up, you want to make will, money on the software. 
yeah that will be a scale up scenario and by doing this we will be uh, we will be reducing the cost uh, we will be reducing the chances of emerging competition so so that no one can match our prices and uh, eventually that will re uh, result in a lesser uh, competitive scenario so what uh, so what market yeah please so what what kind of what does this translate into revenue i can't really read your left side it's, the font is too small so what is the revenue scale up uh, in the bootstrap scenario and what is the revenue scale up in the uh, rev, you know revenue trajectory in the funding scenario uh, so uh, for for 3 years from now we have calculated around uh, uh, in inr we have calculated around 250 uh, 250 cr hello am oh, i audible two, yeah go ahead is that the bootstrap or the uh, funded scenario no that's the funded scenario what is the bootstrap scenario uh, we have not actually uh, i will have to check with my other slides and what is the profitability on, in in all this so uh, the thing that that is missing so, for me is that what is the bootstrap scenario is is what is the profitability of that scenario what is the cash requirement in, in the fund, venture funded scenario what is the cash requirement in the, what, in, in, know, the venture, in the venture in the venture in the venture funded scenario we will be making a we will be uh, having incurring a loss of around a uh, uh, million dollar in first year and uh, in second year we will be incurring a loss of around uh, 2.2 uh, 2, 2 million nearly 2 million dollars and from third mm -hmm. year we will be profitable and uh, from third year we will be generating a profit of around 2 cr uh, sorry uh, 2 million so you are essentially looking at investing 3 million dollars to get to what is the revenue number in in the third year uh, in million in dollars in million dollars uh in third year yeah so uh, in third year it is around uh, uh, 250 cr one minute 250 so it will be around uh, 3.57 3.57 cr do in dollars what uh, can one you minute, talk? just give a calc yeah hello yeah hello you can't mix currencies you can't do you can't yeah, do a yeah. presentation yeah. in mixed currencies that's just no, no, not no i i understand reasonable. I, I, I understand yeah yeah i understand that actually that figure i was not having uh, right now so i because in india because we did not pitch to any uh, like uh, investor okay, outside so india okay so i'm going to need to move on to the other people but in the presentation but let me just give you a quick summary of what i think i think you are doing something very interesting and and it needs to be packaged properly but your you what you're doing right now is great so it's and there's a there's a lot of packaging and and kind of strategic basically if you want to deal with investors there are some you know rules in dealing with investors those things are missing because you haven't done it before but i think you're executing very well you you're closing big con big players as customers all this is fantastic so keep going keep doing what you're doing if you need help with the investor packaging and all of that stuff come here and 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 we will take care of that We'll help you with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good work. Very good work. Thank you. Okay. Subodh Pathak, you are up next. Uh, last week we discussed about. Hello, am I audible? Yes. 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 Go ahead. Uh, last week we discussed about the TAM to be found out and you suggested me to approach the product uh, management teams. But uh, mm -hmm. before approaching product management teams, I just changed my, uh, the way I was searching for data because I was searching for number of units, number of hotels, number of hospitals and the total market size. Instead, mm -hmm. uh, I went for actual IP spending of these industries because that is my market size, I would say. No, yeah, that is not your market size. Company. No, 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 no. That is not going to help you generate market size at all. Wrong, wrong approach. Okay. But then what would be the market size then? 
You need to find the number See, of hotels, me, number I, of hospitals, I'm, the kinds of people that you want to sell to, the kinds of companies that you want to sell to. You need to find the number of hotels out there. That's not difficult to find. Okay. Uh, can we go to the next slide, Maureen? Uh, next, this was the this was my question uh, when we first talked. Now this is this that is, is not, what this I got is actually. Irrelevant. This is irrelevant. This is completely irrelevant. I asked you to go talk to the product managers to find the number of companies in each segment where you want to sell, whether it's hotels or hospitals or whatever, without finding that number. And I told you exactly how to go find that number. Please go find that number and don't go off off the rails. Okay. We'll try. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah. You're very welcome. Uday, you're up next. Hey, Sharmana. Good good morning. Good morning. How are you? Pretty good. Um, so, yeah, basically, I, I uh, hopefully uh, evolve this slide and the next slide a little bit so, from our so last meeting. So, why don't meeting. you summarize? Why don't you summarize a little bit so that other people in the room can follow what you're doing? And then we will dive uh, into your TAM analysis model. Sure. Uh, you mean the what we are about, what Mansion eCommerce yeah, is about? Yeah, that's right. Yes, exactly. Okay. Basic, basically, we are, a, uh, we are a SaaS company, and uh, we help retailers operate efficiently and grow. We have built a suite of about uh, five products, uh, which are all SaaS-based, and uh, that's what we are bringing to market. So in this conversation, so, so Uday just pitched a couple of days ago at our private roundtable, and then there were a couple of takeaways from that uh, in terms of homework, and so he's bringing back a dis uh, for here a discussion on his SAM model. And this is a bottom-up TAM, TAM analysis model, and that's what we're going to work on um, right now. So go ahead, Uday. What have you done? Okay. So uh, basically, we are addressing five major gaps uh, in this uh, in, in the retail market space. Uh, so uh, so put together, you know, uh, pretty much in any any retail client or prospect that we can go to. You know, uh, our our goal is to you know figure out at least one of the gaps that will open mm -hmm. the doors for us and get that yep. one product in there. Uh, and yep. and the revenue numbers, the the pricing numbers that I'm quoting here, is for a combination of one or more such products that you know once we find the gap that we can uh, uh, you know uh, get that in the door and that's the price they'll be paying us on a monthly basis. Uh, yeah. So, okay. uh, based on my based on my research, you know there there are over uh, 237,000 small retailers in the U.S. Uh, and mm -hmm. my definition of small is you know less than a million dollars uh, revenue annual. Mm -hmm. Then there is uh, the medium retailer, which is up to 10 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are 20 approximately 28,000 of them. And the large ones are more than uh, ten million dollars revenue, and they are about, you know, seven thousand five hundred. And mm -hmm. uh, based on our five five product suite, we can recognize a revenue of about ninety nine dollars per month from small guys, and about you know one forty nine from the medium retailers, and uh, two ninety nine from the large retailers. Uh, and I know the large retailers, you know, when we get to the large, it's more based on number of seats and that kind of pricing. Uh, you know, uh, to be honest, you know, I've not been able to pin down the number per seat. So I'm just putting down a very, uh, what so I there, think is a very, yeah. I, I will say one thing yeah. right away. Leave out the large uh -huh. retailers because the, the way to sell to the large retailers is, I mean, if you're charging $299 only from a category of clients that make that much money and, and are going to require a different kind of selling, it won't be worth your time. I think your value is in focusing on the small retailers. That's where your expertise is. That's where your experience is. 
And that's the category that is going to buy online. So if you can, you know, get into the marketplaces of Shopify and so forth, that is the category, the small retailers and maybe a little bit of medium, but really the small retailers is where you're going to find the customers. So I would even say medium is not your target category. Your target category is small, and you better figure out how to leverage using the Shopify marketplace and, and you know, whatever other marketplaces where, there's, where software, retail software is being sold and, and get in there and start selling in bulk numbers as opposed to trying to sell very small dollar amount uh, products to larger companies that will require more handholding. Yeah. Because Absolutely. there's no benefit, so, there's uh, no upside. There, I mean, you're, the amount of money, extra money you're making by going to the larger companies based on this pricing model is just not interesting. It's not attractive. Absolutely. Yeah, point taken. Uh, I want to clarify one thing, though, uh, Sramana. Uh, so we have, you know, I have described in my previous presentation, I have described Mocha. Uh, yeah. But uh, there are four other products which I have not described because, you know, we want to keep the presentation compact and all that good stuff. So yeah. there is one product specifically, it's called Glance, and that mm -hmm. is super suitable for large retailers. Uh, because it is going to save them a ton of money, and uh, it's, That's it's a basically different strategy. Then. That's a different yeah, strategy yeah. So, and different so, business. So, yeah. So, but because we have all those different different uh, products available to us, you know, uh, I can see that we can recognize revenue from different. Uh, categories of that's retail. not how to build a yeah. that's not how to build a scalable business. The problem you have is that if you try to go with a different product that is specific to the large retailer market, you need to build a different kind of channel, a different kind of business, and and these small products are going mm -hmm. to be useless. You can't be mm -hmm. as a small company. You can't be in all those businesses. You have to pick which business you're going to be in. Are you going to be in the in a business to sell to the small e-commerce vendors? Are you gonna be in a business to sell to large retailers? These are two completely different businesses. You cannot be in both of those businesses. You better choose which one you wanna be in and then execute the rest of your strategy accordingly. If that means discarding one of your products, you are gonna, you're gonna to have to make that very hard decision to discard that product. Got it, okay. So I'm gonna think through that, appreciate, appreciate yeah. the feedback. Uh, so, Based on the data uh, that you're showing through... me right now, and knowing your background yeah. and knowing where you're coming from, it seems to me that the small is where your larger market opportunity is. Based on what you're show what you're showing on this presentation. Okay. Um, so, so going with that, uh, and and the fourth uh, category we have is is the marketplace sellers. You know. Uh, yeah, and, and this, this is this is a booming uh, category, and and it's yes. a super new category relatively. Uh, That's right. In you know, of course, in uh, in the U.S., you know, marketplace means. It's not a Amazon. new category. But, the marketplace sellers have been around for a long time. eBay built their entire business on the basis of marketplace sellers. So, but in, in the marketplace sellers, the ones that are power sellers in on Amazon and on eBay, those are the ones that are really good for you. They are small businesses, but they are also power sellers. They've shown some degree of professionalism and some degree of scalability. So those are going to be good players, good target audience, target customers for you. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so you know, as per the reference that I have used, Swamana, there are uh, over uh, 5 million marketplace sellers at Amazon alone. Uh, mm -hmm. But I've taken a little conservative estimate, and there are 33 other marketplaces all over the world. Uh, so even if I can act, even for our time analysis, if you take what is actually accessible to us, uh, you know, I'm using a assumption of you know maybe uh, 250, uh, 2 million 500,000 marketplace uh, sellers that that would be our. I think our your number is lower market. than that. I think the number is lower than that because the power sellers are. I think it's, it follows more the 80-20 equation. 
See, there are 5 million uh-huh. marketplace sellers around the world. Um, probably 20%, okay. maybe 30% are power sellers, and, and I would focus on power that. Seller. Okay. So this, uh, just to clarify one point there, the 5 million is just Amazon. Uh, I don't have the, you know, the total number of sellers all over the world. Uh, you know, I can figure that one out. And, and I think what you're suggesting is take about 20% of that value as my hand. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's exactly right. So, you know, round out the numbers, you're going to get probably a million power sellers with that okay. equation, right? 20% of 5 okay. million. I'm just taking like round numbers for the moment. So it's, if it's 1 million times 1,188, you get a billion plus TAM. But all of that is in the yeah. small cup category, small retailer category, and that's good. So it's, it's, it's still coming out to be the same answer, is that your, your big market opportunity for this product is in the small e-commerce vendor category. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Yeah? So uh, fr- from, yeah, absolutely. So from that recalculation, it comes to around, you know, 1.5 to 2 billion total SaaS time. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, the, the next one is the payment stamp. That is, uh, we can take a percentage of the payments that we enable uh, and, uh, and Shopify so currently what is the does product? that. So what, what is the product that's doing that? I mean, the, people don't like to pay too much of payment commission. So what, what is the value yeah. proposition against which you're going to charge the com- pay commission? Uh, we enable, you know, the, the merchant uh, account services. Uh, for example, you know, we have uh, PayPal, Braintree, Stripe. You know, these are all the payment processors. Uh, but potentially that's, that's we already can take, built into. Isn't that already built into Shopify? Yeah, that's built in. But Shopify takes, uh, you know, about 0.9 percent of of that. Uh, they don't announce that. You know, in the sense, you know, when you subscribe to Shopify, you pay 2.9%. What Shopify does is, you know, they pay Stripe, you know, 1.8 or 1.9%, and they keep the cut. So that's how the industry works from so the what, inside. So what is your, well, what do you want to do into that? What is your disruption uh, plan into that equation? Yeah, so my take, my take would be 0.8%. And this specifically is for my e-store product uh, because that that is the only place that this uh, this is valid. Uh, I don't I don't like so, this strategy. The second strategy is e-store commission and all that competing with Shopify. I don't like the strategy because I told you that this is a bit late to go into that game. Okay. There are too many players out uh, there, so I would scrap that idea. I would I mean this the content catalog thing that you talked about. I assume yeah. this time is based on that one. So I, why don't you just stick to, I mean, if you've got this one product that seems to have a reasonable value proposition, you have a, have a sense that this is going to work. So why don't you valid, continue to validate that strength, uh, that, uh, you know, sense. And, and you've got, it yeah. seems like in the small, category, small retailer category, you have a more than a billion dollar TAM. Why don't we just execute on that and, and just execute the hell out of it make lots of revenues, and, and let's just build this business. Got it. Okay. Right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, the more you uh, can and focus then, and, and really, you know, uh-huh. put your, your um, emphasis, energy, everything on one really solid strategy, the high repeatability, lots of repeatability, the more you're going to be successful in building this business. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Cool. So. Good. Yeah. Uh, and and this is this sli- this is the projection slide where you know currently it is black pretty much. But I just wanted some feedback on the formatting. Uh, if well, if this is what I. Well, formatting is going to be the medium really retailer, large retailer is going to go out, and you're just going to focus yeah, on yeah. your. Yeah. So I, I don't think. Yeah. So now, now, how do I project, you know, I'm basically, you know, I've been in, in, in this industry forever, but, you know, I can pick whatever number out of the hat. So, of course, it depends you're on the, you know, the... 
you're going to need to understand what is it costing you time-wise yeah. and cost-wise yeah. to generate the leads and close the deals. What is the sales cycle? That's why I want you to go out there and start selling to small retailers. You've got a product. Yeah. You've got enough yeah. of a product that you can start selling to the early customers and start understanding those points. So start selling, start generating revenue, start understanding the sales process and the sales cycle, um, and, and take it from there. You're going to All have right. to, for this so, business to work, you're going to have to make these customers buy your product on their own without your having yeah. to touch them. If you have to get on the phone to sell every single deal, you can't sell at that price point. So you've got to make it so easy for them to buy and so easy for them to understand what is it that you're doing for them, how do you help them, you know, achieve what they're trying to achieve. All of that needs to be really seamless and really quick. The issue that, that comes up here is that you told me that you need a large product catalog for this product to be attractive. So there's a little bit of a mismatch in small retailer category versus large product uh, portfolio, large product catalog. That's, that's not a match. That's not a fit. Yeah, exactly. So that, that is the thing, you know, that is for Mocha, but, but for the next product, you know, it is, is all about, you know, small retailers, you know, so, so it's that kind of, that is where I stand in terms of, my offering. So Some pick, are you, you have decisions to make, Uday, you have decisions to make which product and which yeah. market. So you have like five different yeah. products that you're contemplating and you have little early products of. You pick one of them and you pick the right market that fits that product and then go to market with that. So I'm going to let you think about what I said, listen to the recording, replay the recording, and, and try to resolve those two decisions. Pick one product out of the five and one market, and and, okay. and rationalize, justify why you're making those two decisions, which product and which market, and then we can talk in the next private roundtable to that, to finalize. Got it. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'll think through that. All right. So um, we have, I think we have uh, people on the phones who want to talk on the phone still, right? Uh, Nitin, are you on the call? Uh, hi, Sharmana. Morning. Good morning. Is this Nitin? Yes, this is Nitin. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Tell nice me, to what meet are you, you working too. on? Um, sorry, I don't have the slides. I've been on the road for the last 10 days, but I'll try and walk you through. Um, so I'm the CEO and co-founder of Unicreate. Um, we are... Uh, a smart data extraction enterprise product for capital markets. Uh -huh. So okay. banks, asset managers, hedge fund managers, data providers, uh -huh. stock exchanges, and so forth. And we okay. allow business users in these large enterprises to be able to manage their own data extraction from unstructured or textual documents, which come okay. in plenty and plenty of them. So just to uh -huh. put that into the right perspective, uh, I'm thinking about any of uh, the securities trading on the market, like your stocks or bonds, and when they trade, mm -hmm. they come with very heavy documentation such as prospectuses, term sheets, pricing circulars. And each of those mm -hmm. data points before any of the stock exchanges or the investors, be it institutional investors or the retail, um, they have to look at the individual data points like who's issuing it, what is the currency, what is the amount, right? Who's the guarantor? When is it trading? Maturity date and so forth. So mm -hmm. many of the largest data providers um, they have a huge problem with the data growing. The cost of data acquisition is going up dramatically as well. And they only have mm -hmm. two alternatives. Either they have an army of people who manually do it, day in, day out, look at the document, cut, copy, paste into Excel or a database, or they mm -hmm. have uh, huge automation scripts being built by the technology teams. So in yeah. either of the cases, okay. it's highly ineffective because it takes too much time to take care of the changes when the documents change in the layout, the structure, the format, and the context. Mm -hmm. That's where Unicreate really comes in, where uh, we completely mitigate all your setup and the configurations. New users are okay. able to onboard in about 10 minutes, and setup mm -hmm. is not there at all. And the system actually learns from the user behavior on the engine to be able to figure out 
what data points the user is looking at, from which type of documents, how do you find that yeah. data um, more efficiently when you push in new documents. Yeah. Let me take a pause there and see if it makes sense. What is the status? Do you have customers? That yes. early customers? So, that are, yeah? Yeah, so, okay. so let me tell you that. So we finished more. our beta with about 20 of the largest enterprises uh, in December. And we are now mm -hmm. starting with the production trials with four of the largest enterprises with a top line of about a billion dollar uh, to about $20 billion each. And, uh, and these are Indian I companies? I think one of the 90% uh, of them are US, UK. US, UK, okay, great. And, and they're hedge funds, they're banks, what, who, what kind of companies, so, so, customers so are So they, they are the biggest of the data providers like so uh, you know, the Dow Jones, Factivas, Moody's, um, Standard & Poor's and so forth. Okay. Even the stock exchanges, um, insurance firms like the AXA, the Prudentials, and these guys. So, okay. I mean, if you lay it out, of course, we are focused on the capital markets. Um, but, of course, the problem is much deeper across sectors when you look at the legal domain or the insurance, which we ran very, very early POCs about two years ago. But our focus has been entirely on the capital markets. And one of and the big challenges, uh, uh, and that is where, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask, what is the financial uh, arrangement with these POCs so, that you have run with these? Are they paid POCs? How do they translate into mix, paying mix customers? Of, mix, of, mix of paid and uh, non-paid. Uh, and many of the beta customers who were trying it out up until December, they are the ones who are actually going for the production trials now also. And that's paid? Production trial is paid? Uh, some are not paid, some are paid. Okay. Um, and what is the financial situation? Is it is it a bootstrap company? It is bootstrapped, 100% bootstrap. So how many people, what kind of burn rate, and how are you getting by? So Sure. So we, we have a team of about uh, 25 people. Um, majority of the development happens out of Bangalore in India. And uh, we have a sales office with a very lean sales support in London and New York, uh, which largely is managed by me. So I travel and meet a lot of clients uh, every two months. Uh, phone mm -hmm. rate is anywhere between about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month. And you are able to recover that from your paid trials and so forth, or is that not yet? Red? Not yet. It's something which uh, absolutely we are not able to recover yet. But we are hoping because the mm -hmm. licensing model. Uh, runs into these large enterprises on a use case by use case. So there are mm -hmm. two models, one which focuses on a very fixed use case for a client where they have a set set of documents, set fields, and then there are larger mm -hmm. enterprises who might want to run the same engine for multiple use cases, like for equities, derivatives, fixed income, and many other use cases. So even with a single client contract, production contract coming in, um, we are hoping to be cash flow positive in, with that first contract itself. Yeah, okay, all right. Okay, so how can I help you? So one of the main challenges that we, of course, saw dealing with the B2B enterprise is, of course, the time it takes to deal with the big boys and mm -hmm. the sales conversion cycles as well. Of course, you know, we also made tons of those mistakes where we were working with the clients, doing the customization for four weeks, going for the pilot, then trying it out, and the pilot not succeeding with them, then taking the same pilot to the other client. Of course, putting together all those beta learnings, we have tried to shorten the sales cycle from what used to be about upwards of nine months to roughly about six weeks, where we have created mm -hmm. a self-service model and we don't even get involved. So like how you were telling Uday, that's exactly what we also understood that in order for us to be able to scale aggressively, we need to you know, take ourselves out of the equation so that the model could really work very efficiently. So clients are loving the fact that they don't have the setup process, they don't have a service provider, and they don't have to have any bit of a hand holding. You know, training is not required. It's hardly anything like minimal. Doesn't disrupt their current processes. But we still feel that you know we can improve a lot more. You know, I mean, and that's so what I you know, thing, was hoping to get your thoughts. One thing that stands out in just this little conversation that we've had is that. In the way we manage companies in our program, the way we advise companies, mm -hmm. is to be very disciplined about not doing 
too much unpaid work for customers. Okay. When you're dealing with enterprise customers, if you have identified use cases where you have proven success, if you understand, and that's very important to identify the use cases where you can make direct impact. If you're still uh, fussing around trying to find those use cases where you can actually make an impact, that's a different story. But if you've been in the market for a bit now, you must have yes. clear understanding of which use cases and for what kinds of customers are the ones where you're, you can make a real impact. We need to kind of short, shorten your, not shorten, like focus your work, your energy on those use cases and the customers who have those pain points and have you implement the sales 2.0 strategy, which you, should fi you will find that in the curriculum. You should go through that sales 2.0 module. And mm -hmm. uh, for our next discussion, here's something I would like you to do as a homework. And, and I think it's going to be the, the most effective thing you can do to shorten your sales cycle and get straight to revenue. This is what's as follows. Okay. okay. So identify which are your top use cases that can, where you have clear cut ROI. What is the time frame? that it takes for you, for your customers to realize that use case, which gives you an idea about pilots and sales cycles and all that. And I would like to discuss all of these mm -hmm. in concrete terms. I would like to understand the use cases. I would like to understand the target customer. I would like the time to ROI. I would like to understand the pilot process. And, and thus, we are going to, we're going to create the sales 2.0 process. You're going to apply the methodology you will learn in the curriculum. We're going to work together to apply that process and create a repeatable sales process, and that's going to put your business on a scalable path. So you're going to okay. basically prune. Super. There's a lot of activity you're doing right now that you need to prune. You know, I, I once worked in a, a, great, a vine field, vineyard, um, in Oregon. Mm -hmm. I was... A friend of mine has a vineyard, and I, I went up to Oregon and hang out with him, and, and it was harvest season in September, and, and he asked me to come along and, and, and help them prune. So what happens is, you know, when grapes grow in a bunch, they tend to grow pretty large. So before harvest, so right. about six weeks before harvest, you have to prune the, the grapes so that only a small number of grapes remain on the vine so that they have time they have another six weeks to get really big and juicy, and that's the exercise that you're trying to do here. You have done lots of experiments. For two years, you've done a lot of experiments. You've tried this use case, that use case, this kind of customer, that kind of customer insurance, hedge fund, blah, blah, blah. Now we need to really prune it and figure out what is the strategy. And then you're going to execute Sorry. on just that strategy. This is what I was just doing with Uday. Exactly the same thing that I'm talking about doing with you right. is exactly what I'm doing with Uday. Uday has already gone through several cycles and has, is getting closer to his, you know, strategy, basically. And then he's going to implement the sales 2.0 on that. You, yours is a different, slightly different market because you're, you're doing enterprise selling, but, but the process, the pruning process is exactly the same. You need to zero in on the use cases that you're going to repeat that have sizable TAM. That's the other thing that you need to assess is the market size. So there is a module on market sizing. You have to apply, once you mm -hmm. identify where is your market, which is the use case, then you have to quantify that use case. You have to price that use case. You have to quantify that use case into a bottom-up TAM analysis. This is, the, in the next six weeks, this is, if we can, if you and I can crash out this, you're going to have a repeatable sales process. Yeah and it'll scale. Super. No, I think that is what I was hoping to understand as well. And I think one of the key things that we have really seen with the clients is um, they're, it's not that they don't have the appetite to pay, but because as a part of the software evaluation, either it's through a formal official RFP or just because we're able to build that network within the organization and understand the market, uh, they're assessing others as well. And just the likelihood to pay for the pilots has just gone down dramatically in the last, I think, nine to 12 months. And this is something that we've seen across the board for these enterprises. 
Yeah, but you know, I, I, I'm not sure if I fully agree with the market strategy, the go-to-market strategy, because you, you mentioned hedge funds, right? Hedge funds are small companies. Hedge funds mm-hmm. are not large enterprises, but they have a tremendous amount Correct. of money. And if you can yeah. deliver value to their process, they're willing to pay a lot. So maybe your better go-to-market strategy is going after these, you know, small or mid-sized hedge funds that are organizationally yeah. and decision-making wise smaller, but they have a lot of money. I mean, paying fifteen, twenty thousand dollars if you're smoothening their process right. is a no-brainer for these people. If you have a use case that delivers value, that's why I'm focusing on the use. That, case. That's very true, and I think up until now we have been largely focused on the tier one companies, and I think this is where we are now bringing it down to the organizations where they don't have too many massive steps in the vendor management or software evaluation process. You know the problem, you get in and you can solve it and get out. So those are the ones which yeah, so, we are now gonna zero in as well. So as I did, a part can of you yourself. bring me back in the next round, next private round table or public round table, whenever you want to talk to me next, when you, whenever you have this analysis done, if you could bring me back the concrete of the pain points the, and, and just do, a, do some uh, curriculum time if, if before our mm-hmm. next call, if you can do the curriculum work that I just suggested to you and, and do the pairing down of the use cases where you really focus on the ones that are working yeah. and delivering ROI, I think we can have a very productive conversation. I will absolutely try my best. I'm actually there in San Francisco and I've registered for the rendezvous meeting as well. So hopefully I'll see you then on the 26th. Oh, terrific. Uh, terrific. That's great. So, so I'll uh, see you next week then. So I will try and do my, yeah, so I'll try and do my homework before that. Perfect. All right. See you soon then. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. You're very welcome. I look forward to it. Okay, folks, if you like what we are doing here, as you can see, we do pretty intense work, right? We are making very important, very strategic decisions for all the companies in our community with definitive methodology, with definitive data, experiments, pilots, et cetera. So it's it's very serious strategic work. If you like that kind of approach, And if you have serious entrepreneurs in your friends and family networks who are looking for that kind of support, bring them into One Million by One Million. That's the kind of entrepreneurs we like to work with. Resource-wise, you'll find everything at 1mby1m.com. There is a terrific blog. You'll learn a lot just by following the blog. There's an Entrepreneur Journeys book series. There are 12 volumes of those. These are case study-based books, 12 to 16 case studies per book. And you'll learn a lot by reading those books. They're all available on Amazon. These roundtables happen every week. We're coming up to our 450th roundtable. And these, are, these have been around for more than 10 years. Over 100,000 people have attended. This is a very popular forum for entrepreneurs to come and seek support. Our full acceleration program, actually today you met several people in this program who are already premium members. You saw Nitin, you saw Uday, they're all premium members. Subad, they're all premium members. Um, This is our full extensive methodology guidance program. We have a curriculum that you have access to through the premium program where we teach the methodologies. I was talking about sales 2.0, market sizing. We have modules, curriculum modules on all of that. We help you with business development where we have contacts within our network we will introduce you to people um, as appropriate. And we do the strategy consulting, mentoring, coaching, whatever name you put on it, but it is the direct project work that we are doing. As you saw today, you saw several of those. Um, that's what we do in the round tables, in the private round tables. We have extensive amounts of that kind of strategic work going on. Um, Now, when you are ready for financing, and that's something that takes time, um, like, you know, all the businesses that you saw today will have to go through a certain amount of work before they're ready for financing, if they want to raise financing, and that's where we do the work with you, and then when you are ready, we will introduce you to our investor network. We have a terrific investor network. You should go to the seed capital section of our blog and you will see interviews with many, many, many of these investors that we work with all the time. 
and you will, you know, get a feel for how they think. We also have a podcast channel where we publish a lot of these interviews. Um, you can listen to those interviews and you'll learn a lot of how investors think about investment. And then we also have a lot of clout in the media and we do let you leverage that cloud and get the word out there about your business. The self-assessment on the 1M by 1M website is a questionnaire that we recommend that all of you use to evaluate your own business strategy. It's very, very <coughs> important for you to assess if you're doing the right things, if you have ad addressed the kinds of questions that investors would ask you, because you are an investor in your company, so you better Think of yourself as an investor and start addressing those sort of same questions for yourself before you go in front of any investor. If you run into any kind of methodology gap, like I'm asking a question in the questionnaire, in the self-assessment, that you don't really understand, you need to go in and plug that methodology gap, plug that knowledge gap, and you can do that very easily by going into 1M by 1M Basic. There's also, you know, those of you who are doing financing for the first time, there's extensive information within the curriculum about financing. So you can, you can learn what you need to learn about financing there and ask questions, obviously, if you're a premium member. So go dig around on the website, see if this program is for you. It does require a very significant amount of self-learning. So we want only people who are comfortable with self-learning. If you're not comfortable with self-learning and you're expecting hand-holding, every step of the way, that is not going to work here. You're gonna to have to do self-study and then come talk to me at the round tables, but you will have to put in the self-study time. And that's the kind of entrepreneur we are looking for. Um, so anyway, go dig around on the website. There are lots of FAQs, video FAQs, detailed description of the curriculum. It's a case study based curriculum with over a thousand case studies. This includes 100 plus unicorn entrepreneurs, uh, 400 plus bootstrap companies, 400 plus venture funded companies. So it's an extensive amount of material based on other people's experiences and input on how they have been successful, how they have failed in some cases, what hasn't worked. So you get to learn, you get to stand on the shoulders of giants, so to speak. Um, our methodology is lean, capital efficient bootstrap startups. Our philosophy is bootstrap first, raise money later, because mostly investors are looking for companies that are already validated. Um, you will find lots of coverage of premium members, uh, sorry, lots of coverage of our yeah, premium members in the uh, press section where we uh, you know, introduce our, our businesses from the community into the media, into the world, so to speak. And uh, that kind of social proof is always appreciated by people who are looking at it, whether it's customers or investors. So that's it. We have one more uh, roundtable, free roundtable on June 27th, and then three more in July. So register for one of them if you would like to come and work in the same mode that you saw today. And then we have, um, we have quite a few uh, rendezvous, in-person rendezvous coming up. There's one next week in June and then two more in July. So I hope to see some of you in person. If you're local to the Bay Area or visiting the Bay Area, do come see me and uh, you'll meet other people as well in those sessions. And right now, we can take a few more questions uh, from the public chat or if you want to dial in. Um, so uh, I'm, you know, we have a couple of minutes left. Yes, you can have two minutes, Andy. Please dial in, absolutely, go ahead. Uh, David Hauer, you, uh, Maureen just forwarded your uh, private message to uh, to me. Maureen, why don't you cut and paste the message to the public chat so that everybody can read it? And um, and I look forward to seeing you more at the sessions, David. Thank you for your note. David says, Romano, this is wonderful what you're doing. I'm in Vancouver, Canada. Lots of advisors have an agenda in previous ventures. Some wanted to get data to grab my business. It's so rare to meet someone offering genuine help. 
I'll be watching your webinar regularly. Thank you. That's great. I'm very happy to hear that you find it helpful. Hi, good morning. Yes, go Hello. ahead. Is that Andy? Uh, yes, it is. Hi, hi, Sharana. Um, go ahead. I'm confused because I'm watching on the laptop and talking on my phone. Um, you know, hey, I'm actually at work, and so it's not a good time because my boss just arrived. So maybe I'll I'll try next time. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. You're welcome okay. to do that. Thank That's you. Okay. I gotta go. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> All right. So just so you know, um, we do have a lot of entrepreneurs who bootstrap using a paycheck. So companies as you know, entrepreneurs who have a job and are starting a company on the side, starting to validate a concept, and we are perfectly fine with that mode of company building. We've had a lot of success with that mode of company building as well, so you're very welcome to do that. Um, let me introduce you to Irina Patterson, who's our team member who will be happy to answer any questions you might have about the one by one in program. Her email is irina at one by one com. Very simple. Um, you can reach out to her and she'll you know, very patiently answer whatever questions you might have. So, does anybody have any other questions? If you can type in public chat or dial in, um, otherwise I'm going to adjourn the session. We've had a long discussion today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. Anybody? Any other questions, comments? All right, I don't see any questions, so we're going to adjourn the session, and we will be back with you next week. Thank you for coming. Bye.